In this video, we are going to see about an Azure Data Engineer interview question. And this question is specifically related to Apache Spark. We all know that Apache Spark is mainly used to perform big data transformation in data engineering. And this question is around the data transformation part. So you might ask this interview question in different ways. Say for example, you might get your question like, how would you use a data frame inside a Spark SQL command without converting the data frame to a temp view? Or else you might get the question like, how would you minimize the total number of temp view creation during data transformation? So firstly, let's understand this interview question. So what this basically means is, in Apache Spark, we can perform data transformation by using multiple programming languages in the same notebook. Say for example, if a data engineer is more comfortable with PySpark, then he can use PySpark to do the data transformation. Similarly, if your data engineer is more comfortable in using Spark SQL, then you can use Spark SQL to do the data transformation. So this is one of the main benefits of using Apache Spark. So one interesting thing to note here is, while using Spark SQL to perform the data transformation, usually most of the time, the data engineers firstly will create a temporary view with the data frame. And then they'll be using this temporary view in the Spark SQL commands to perform the data transformation. So there is a high chance that even now, many data engineers will be creating temporary views while using Spark SQL commands for data transformation. So this interview question is specifically asking us to explain, without creating the temporary view, how would you use the data frame directly in the Spark SQL command to perform the data transformation? The second question is also the same one. So basically, if we use the data frame instead of temporary views in the Spark SQL command, we can minimize the total number of temporary view creation during data transformation. Okay, I guess now you should have a clear understanding about the interview question. Let's see how we can answer this better in a quick demo. Okay, now I'm inside the Azure Databricks and I have created a new notebook here to understand this interview question. So here, Firstly, I'm going to create a sample sales data frame. So for that, firstly, I have imported the required libraries. So these are the different data types that we are going to use in the data frame. So after importing them, here I have defined the schema of the data frame. The schema is just like the different columns that you want to be defined in your data frame. So since this is a sales related data frame, we have columns defined here like order ID, product, etc. So for all these individual columns, we need to specify the data type based on the type of data that needs to be stored in this data frame. So these data types is what we have imported earlier as the first step. So once we have defined the schema, we can then define the data that needs to be stored in the data frame. So this is just the dummy data. And here we have five rows which will be added to the data frame. So this data needs to have values for all the individual columns that we have defined in our schema. So after defining the data and the schema, we can use the spark.createDataFrame function to create a data frame by passing both the data and the schema as the input to the Spark function. So here I have named this data frame as sales underscore df. And finally, I have a display function here to display the created data frame sales underscore df. So this is the code to create a sample data frame in PySpark. So let's run the cell now. Cool, as you can see here, this is our sales data frame. So this data frame will have all the columns and the data defined above in the code. So you can think a data frame as something like a table representation of data in Apache Spark. Okay, so now we have our data frame and we are going to use this data frame to perform the data transformation. So as we saw in this interview question, we are going to use a Spark SQL command to transform this data frame. So as discussed earlier, to perform this transformation, usually what data engineers do is, they first create a temporary view using this data frame, and after creating the temporary view, they use that view in Spark SQL command to perform the data transformation. So what I mean by this is, let me scroll down, and as you can see here in the code, we are basically using the latest sales underscore df data frame. And then we are using the create or replace temp view function to create a temporary view based on the data frame sales underscore df. And here we have given the name of the view as vw underscore sales. So when we run the cell, we will be creating a view called vw underscore sales. 
And then this view can be used in the Spark SQL command to perform the data transformation. So for example, let's do a simple transformation. So in this data frame, there are two types of categories in this category column, right? Which are electronics and clothing. So consider we need to find the total price of the products that belongs to electronics category and also the total price of the products that belongs to the clothing category. So let's do this transformation using the Spark SQL command. So if I scroll down, here you can see I'm using a function called spark.sql and using this function, you can write the Spark SQL query to do the transformation. So this is the simple SQL query based on the example that we discussed earlier. So here, the most important thing is this from statement over here, where we have referenced our temporary view VW underscore sales. So this is the way most of the data engineers follows while using the Spark SQL for data transformation. So the result of this SQL query will be get saved as a new data frame called total underscore price. So when you display this new data frame, it would look like this with a new transformation applied. So basically, the only thing that matters most is the temporary view that is referenced in the SQL query. But the interview question is, without creating the temporary view, how would you directly refer your data frame, which is sales underscore df, inside the Spark SQL command to perform the same transformation? So by doing in this way, we are saving one additional step in creating the temporary view from a data frame for doing Spark SQL operation. So let's see how we can do that. So here I'll scroll down and as you can see here, this is the new way of doing it. So in this way, you can use the data frame directly in the Spark SQL command without creating a new temporary view. So here, basically we are pretty much using the same SQL query defined above. But the only difference is, instead of referring the temporary view in the from class, we are referring a variable name called table in the from class which should be enclosed within the curly braces. So this curly brace is an important one, which is the syntax for this new way. So in addition to that, we need to specify one final thing. So basically this is our complete SQL query. And after the query ends, inside the same spark.sql function, we need to type comma and then the variable name equals the data frame name. In this case, the variable name is table and the data frame name is sales underscore df. So in Spark, we cannot directly reference the data frame inside the Spark SQL command. So in this new way, we first assign the data frame to a variable, which means that you are telling Spark, this variable now holds the data of the data frame. And after assigning that, we can reference this variable inside the SQL query command. And most importantly, you need to enclose the variable name inside the curly braces. So by doing in this way, we don't have to create a temporary view for performing Spark SQL operation. Instead, we can do it using the data frame itself. So if you run this, you'll get the same output that we got in the earlier step. So one thing to note here is, this variable name defined over here can be any name. Say for example, I will change the variable name here to table underscore 123 and after changing here, we need to give the same variable name inside the SQL query. So once you do that and run the cell, it would work fine without any issue. So this is the only change required in order to use the data frame directly in the Spark SQL command without creating the temporary view. So this is really important since we can save multiple lines of codes while doing the complex transformation. So this question is recently asked in many interviews. So it is very important to understand. I hope everyone find this video useful. So if you are a data engineer and have been still using the temporary view to perform the Spark SQL operation, please let me know in the comments so that I can understand this is useful to you or not. So that's it for today. Please like, share and subscribe if you find this video useful. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.